Ever since Ninjago's original run way back in 2011, there's always been dragons. There's yet to be a storyline in Ninjago where there hasn't been a dragon set included, but which ones stand out from the rest? Hey guys, Ace from Masters here, and today we are counting down the top 10 LEGO Ninjago dragons. Before we get into the list, I want to lay a few disclaimers here. Basically, the way this list is going to work is that we are not going to be factoring the price because that's just not fair to other dragons because not all dragons are the beef of the set. In some cases, the dragon is actually the secondary model, so that wouldn't be quite as fair. In addition, we're not going to be factoring the way they were portrayed in the TV show because the way they were portrayed in the TV show also isn't fair because different dragons had different portrayals, different amount of screen times, in addition the dragons are just completely different from their actual toy form. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at the list starting with number 10. Cole's dragon from Skybound probably came as a surprise to most of you because a lot of you probably weren't expecting a dragon so small to be able to make it onto the list. Well, Cole's Dragon made it onto the list mainly because of the amount of articulation and the brick build head. The amount of articulation from this dragon is just as good as pretty much any other dragon and sometimes even better. The amount of articulation in the wings is great. You can pretty much get all forms of articulation possible in the wings. In addition, the legs also have a bunch of articulation from the ankles and the legs themselves. The tail uses mixed ball joints which makes it extremely pulsable in pretty much every direction. And the head is probably the least pulsable because it is connected by a hinge instead of a ball joint where the actual head is connected to the neck. However, it's still pulsable because the base of the neck actually is connected with the ball joint. In addition, the set also has that brick built head, which of course makes it a lot better in most people's opinion, mainly because you have a lot more personality and a lot better detail coming from that brick built head for most people, especially considering it does have that sticker on the top. And overall, the dragon was just a very good dragon, even despite its size. The original Ice Dragon from 2011 comes in at number 9. The original Ice Dragon featured foldable wings that could fold in and out. It had claws on the top that were also foldable, and it did have, unfortunately, not a brick build head. The head was a two-piece head, however, there were certain advantages to it. The head itself actually looked pretty good, and it was able to attach chains relatively easily. In addition, it also had the function to be able to shoot it and launching the dragon's breath. The legs were very poseable, had the, of course, the just generic, uh, stereotypical ankle articulation along with normal leg articulation. But what really set it apart from Cole's dragon was the ability to launch the dragon's breath. This set had that play feature that was lacking from Cold's Dragon. Cold's Dragon didn't really have any specific play features, and because of that, the Ice Dragon from 2011 was just able to barely edge it out. The Ningdroid Mech Dragon was the first dragon to feature a brick built head, and it also had a relatively good one. There was lots of nice details in there, and in addition, it's the only dragon which isn't really organic in any way. This is a fully mechanical dragon which separates it from the rest of the pack. However, this dragon had a little bit of flaws because just overall the thing was very clustered. Not as clustered as say the Ultra Dragon, but it was kind of all over the place and really just crazy. However, that didn't stop it from having tons of play features. The play features in the dragon itself was just crazy. There was two saws right in the front which you were able to spin very quickly which was really cool. In addition, it also had a Technic Blaster. In the back, the tail was able to swipe all over the place by using a gear. And there was also a cage which you could store Lloyd or anyone else if you wanted to inside of the mech dragon itself. In addition, there was a handle which you could use on the side. And there was two panels that if you pulled them off, you could attach to your Ningtroid figures and use them as gliders, which was pretty cool. The handle also added a ton of playability to the set because it made it a lot easier to sort of move that thing around. However, the set still kind of lacked because of just how clustered it was and just how much stuff they tried to pack in, which kind of ruined a little bit of just the overall appearance of the set compared to others and made it a little bit less refined. The Fusion Dragon is the most recent dragon on this list and is also the most unique. The reason for that being is, of course, the two heads. 
Now, the last time they tried to do something even remotely near this concept was with the four-headed dragon from Rise of the Snakes, best known as the Ultra Dragon, and that was just a mess. However, the Fusion Dragon pretty much took everything bad about that and just threw it out the window into this one great two-headed dragon. The only bad thing about this is that it doesn't really have any waste articulation, which kind of limits it compared to other dragons. It had a stud shooter in the back for either Kai or Nia to operate, depending on who you want to operate it. In addition, the entire just fusion concept works so well here. The way they manage to blend in the red along with the blue in certain areas is just great. There's so many just really nice details in there. However, it just kind of feels a little bit lacking compared to other dragons because of these missing details. For example, the saddle is just completely not there. It doesn't have any sort of like way that you could even see them really being able to sort of like almost pilot the dragon. You know, they just kind of sit up there, but it's kind of like they're just barely there. They're just sitting wherever they can, and they look like they're going to fall off and pretty much instantly compared to other dragons. However, that doesn't make it anything bad. It's just, you know, kind of different and feels like something's a little bit missing there. The brick built head is extremely nice. They did a really good job, especially with the two different colors. In addition, the wings are actually really cool because of those transparent uh, wingtips on the top, which is another cool little thing. And the articulation, of course, is great with them having tons of articulation in the tail from mixel ball joints and the legs in general just had a lot of articulation overall the fusing dragon was a very cool dragon but the real thing that it made a lack was just the lack of the waist articulation the titanium dragon was everything the fusing dragon was and then some more the titanium dragon's main little bit of separation from the fusion dragon would be the waist articulation. Waist articulation really adds a whole lot to this set, and in addition this set also has a full on saddle built for Zane the Sidon which really makes it feel more complete, at least to us. In addition, the way the head is built is really cool with all the angles, it's got, you know, just one of the more interesting brick built heads they've released. In addition, it does have all the mixel ball joints in the tails that has all that extra articulation. The only kind of disappointing thing is that the wings aren't able to fold. They're pretty much fixed in place with the exception of being able to move up and down a little bit, which is the really only lacking thing from the set. Overall though, the set's a really good dragon, and other than, you know, just a little small bit of nitpicking on the wings, there isn't anything really wrong with it. Jay's Elemental Dragon is very similar to the Titanium Dragon. The way it's built is very similar, however, it doesn't have any waist articulation. So why did we put Jay's Elemental Dragon ahead of the Titanium Dragon? Well, we decided to put it ahead of the Titanium Dragon because it has spring-loaded shooters. The little extra bit of playability was enough to set it apart. The actual dragon itself is very solid, it has a lot of nice little details, and the way the colors go with the transparent pieces all over is just visually appealing to a lot of people and it looks very cool. The brick build head is very interesting and kind of controversial, but in our case I think it's fine. In addition, the wings are pretty cool. There's those two little sort of, well they use the elemental blade piece, which are adjustable in the middle, which is nice, you know, a little bit of adjustability from there. And in addition, it does have that saddle where you can hold weapons, or in this case, it has the Tiger Widow ven Venom, but if you wanted to, you could put weapons. And overall, the dragon is just a very solid thing. It's very cool, but it just barely eggs out the Titanium Dragon, mainly because of that little extra bit of playability. The Master Wu Dragon was a part of the Possession Wave, it was a very, very cool dragon. For one, it was a dragon for Sensei Wu, which was one thing a lot of people never expected to get. A dragon for Sensei Wu just seemed so crazy before this got revealed as a set we would be getting. And there was a lot of small little things in there that really fit Sensei Wu. For example, there was a table and two removable cups for a teapot, which was kind of cool. In addition, the head of the dragon kind of showed a little bit of aging there and a little bit of a mustache which also kind of fit his older character, which was also cool. And the head itself used a lot of cool building techniques to actually construct it, which was nice. The legs were pretty cool, although it was kind of weird to see that one axle just bear out in the front legs, which was kind of disappointing. The wings were pretty solid. They weren't all that poseable, though. You could move it a little bit because, you know, it did have that uh, ball joint at the front, but the actual feathers weren't movable at all, completely fixed in place. The saddle was an interesting design, but a good one. He had a nice little torch, too, to go with it. The posability of the tail was, of course, like most of the dragons, fully posable using mixel ball joints, which was, of course, nice. 
And the dragon itself was just extremely solid. There was pretty much nothing wrong with it, and it was really hard to actually choose these last four dragons in their placements, but this one ended up taking the fourth spot. The Moro Dragon is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, Ninjago Dragons to be released to date. In addition, the design of the dragon is just one of the most unique too, because the way the body is made is almost to make it sort of feel like it's flying in the air, where the body sort of goes up and down throughout the whole thing, and it looks really cool. The head is also one of the coolest, well actually in my opinion, the coolest brick built head there is. It's just so cool, there's so many cool details, it's got a really nice shaping too, and it looks really good. But what holds this thing down? is that it has pretty much no sort of like action features to it whatsoever. You know, the brick build head, it moves up and down, and the dragon alone, you know, it's it's fun. You can move it around in the air, but that's pretty much all there is to it. There's no other sort of like action de or action features to it, like a stud shooter or anything like that, which you would expect for something, you know, as big as this one. However, despite that, this dragon is still really good. The poseability, of course, is great, just like all the other dragons. You know, the tail's got the mix of ball joints and all that good stuff. The legs look really cool, it uses a lot of transparent pieces to get that ghostly effect that they've been, or that they tried to get for the possession line, which works really well here. And the wings also look really cool, because you know, they, they aren't brick built, they are just one giant sort of cloth piece, which is, you know, it's debatable whether or not that's better or worse, you know, different people have different opinions. I think it's fine, I think it looks really cool here and works really well. The saddle also looks really nice for the... Uh, possessed version of Lloyd or you know Moro there which looks really good and fits well with the dragon and overall details just the dragon the details just everything about it is really really great and it's just one of the best dragons to ever be released the original lightning dragon takes the number two spot and many of you probably weren't expecting an original dragon to make it this far on the list However, those of you that actually own the Lightning Dragon, like myself, will understand why the Lightning Dragon is this far up. The Lightning Dragon is just crazy. The amount of articulation on the set is probably the best out of any dragon there is. It features three points of waist articulation. The wings are foldable, it has claws in the front so you could grab a minifigure if you wanted to, and there are actually two points to move the wings up and down, one being sort of almost like a shoulder joint, and then there's almost like another extension that actually connects to the body, so that adds even more articulation. There's also spears on the dragon which you could take off and you know use for your minifigure, and the saddle is also very well built with some nice details with those two little barrel things falling out. The only really bad thing about this dragon is that it has that just big old two molded head and that's not even really all that bad but it does hold it down because it would be so much better if this had a brick built head. However, you know there are that certain advantage like being able to shoot the dragon's breath, you know. You do have advantages to it. But that's pretty much the only bad thing about this dragon. This dragon is just really, really good. However, it does have that stigma as being a part of the original dragon ways, which are generally pretty bad. But this one is the exception to the rule, and it's just really, really good. Before we reveal number one, I want to include a few honorable mentions. The Ultra Dragon was a pretty decent dragon, but it was just way too clustered. However, I thought it did deserve a mention because it's one of the more unique dragons out there. The Golden Dragon is almost exactly like the original Ice Dragon, however it didn't make the list mainly because it has no ankle articulation, which really holds it down and kind of stops it from being able to make it to the number 10 spot. And the Earth Dragon, the original Earth Dragon, also was a unique one which had just Kind of, it suffered from just the lack of leg articulation. There was pretty much no leg articulation in the back, which they did try to fix by including some waist articulation. However, I thought it deserved the mention because it was unique. At number one, we have the green NRG dragon. The green NRG dragon takes pretty much everything that was wrong with the original lightning dragon and fixes it. The only real issue that came from the original Lightning Dragon was the lack of a brick built head, and this one has brick built head. This also has the ability to grab minifigures using the claws on the feet. It has stud shooters, which sort of replace the ability of the uh, ability to launch the dragon's breath. 
The wings are foldable just like in the original Lightning Dragon, and it has all the articulation you need. It of course has all of the mixoball joints for the tail, it has the articulation in the legs and in the neck, and the saddle is also nice with the ability to store a bag in the back along with some other things if you want to, and overall it's pretty much the perfect package for a dragon. And that was my list for the top 10 LEGO Ninjago Dragons. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to tell me how I did in the comment section below and make your own list. And remember, since this is only my second top 10 video, ways to improve are of course extremely appreciated in the comment section below. But yeah, that is pretty much it. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to check out other top 10s I have made on my channel. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.